thank you for joining us for this afternoon's Send My Ad webinar. Uh, we are going to talk about some of the new features that were introduced in our update, which was about a week and a half ago. Um, by now, you've had a chance to probably see some of these, um, but we want to explain a little bit uh, more about some of those things. And there are possibly some things that you haven't seen yet. So we'd like to go through those with you. We're going to talk about uh, uh, some new menus, select menus, and um, how they work, uh, where they are and where they aren't. Um, we're going to talk about the publisher dashboard, uh, because as you've probably seen, it's disappeared. Uh, not really, but we've, we've reorganized it. Um, there's some new behavior around uh, what happens when an advertiser or one of your staff changes and adds uh, issues that are assigned to it. And we also have a, a new feature that lets you hide uh, old issues uh, selectively. And that's, uh, that's pretty handy, especially if you've been with, with us for quite a while. Uh, so you probably have a lot of ads that occasionally show up. So um, in GoToWebinar, there's the ability to expand your screen. Uh, I have a relatively large monitor, so you may need to adjust so you can see the whole uh, screen sharing here. Um, if you have any questions, you can type those into the, the little GoToWebinar control panel off to the side. Uh, we'll try and hit those at the end. Uh, and if, if it's something particularly relevant, we may, uh, we may talk about those as we uh, go along. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've already logged into Send My Ad as a publisher user. And uh, one of the very first things and one of the, the biggest um, appearance changes in the site with our new update is the, uh, the new select menus. So uh, the best example of that uh, is in your print ad uh, upload form. Now we had, we still have technically, we have a widget uh, that you can enable. Uh, I'll show you where that is, um, an alphabetical selector. So if you have that, if you have a lot of, um, if you have a lot of publications, uh, you have the option to turn on, it's a kind of a long uh, A to Z, widget, it looks like a little directory kind of thing, and you can pull down on each letter of the alphabet and get a sublisting of all of your publications. Well, we, across the site, we implemented this new style of uh, select menu. And not everywhere, but in quite a few places, it has at the very top a little, uh, a little search box. And it behaves uh, very much like the quick search box. So I can just simply begin typing uh, the name of one of my publications and it will begin to filter that list for you. So it's a much quicker and much more integrated method of doing the same thing that that A to Z widget uh, was doing, but rather than having uh, the pull down and the A to Z, uh, it sort of compresses it all down into one option. Now let me go back and show you, um, if you're not familiar with that, or if you forget how to turn it off, let me show you where that is. That's under your company profile, and you go to print ad settings, and that's under manage upload form items. Okay, and it's the very first option. So if you turn that on, Um, let me reload the site just so I get the change. Oh, I might have to log out. Oh, uh, actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm not seeing it because they don't have, um, I only have uh, four or five publications there. There's a certain minimum number that you need. But uh, it looks, um, it looks like what we show in that screenshot. 
So if you remember that little widget, it's A to Z, and then we have uh, like a number um, element as well. So um, that really becomes unnecessary. And if you find that you really do um, agree that uh, the new select menu doesn't really require you to use that A to Z selector, please turn that off. And uh, fair warning, we are probably going to remove uh, that selector at some point pretty soon. So uh, we would advise you to you know, get used to it, um, uh, disable it if you can, uh, and we hope that you'll find that it's a, a better solution for us. Okay, now as I mentioned, um, that new style of select menu has been implemented across the site. And the most obvious uh, feature is that little search item. Now it, uh, it behaves very much like the quick search that you'll find in many of our views. So if you begin to type in the quick search, it will, uh, for whatever data is in that table or view, it will narrow down and show you things that uh, are, are filtered by what you've typed. Same principle applies here. So if I begin to type uh, W, I've only got one publication that becomes uh, available there. I type the letter A, so it's everything with an A in the name. Okay, so it's very fast, it's very efficient. Um, you will notice that um, many of the menus have this, okay? Um, but not everyone does. Okay, so here's an example. Now, this is something that we control as developers, and we've tried to look at the, uh, the entire site and figure out places where a search makes sense. In this one, um, it's, there aren't that many options. Um, we have a special icon next to each one. Um, so it was felt that maybe that one didn't, didn't need the search option, okay? Um, there are places where, for example, um, let's see, okay, here's a good example, the state. Now there's, there's lots of states, right? And that menu scrolls on. We also have Canadian provinces uh, from Australia. And so it's, it's handy to have the search at the top. Um, but in the same, very same panel, uh, most people don't have more than one or two technical contacts set up. So, uh, you know, we've tried to just, uh, go through and look at those and try and make a judgment call. Now, where we might have made an error is that, uh, when we're testing things, you know, we look at, we look at our demo sites, we look at some, some of the existing customers, but, you know, one, uh, one publisher may have uh, 300 publications, another may have 10. So the search may be more important to the people who have more data. Um, and we can't always guess uh, what menu for any given publisher is going to be so unmanageable that they really need the, uh, the quick search at the top. So the point of that is we would love for you to give us some feedback on this if you find that you know, hey, there's a select menu somewhere, uh, and I've got 50 items, and I hate scrolling. Um, can you make it a search? The answer is always yes. You just have to let us know, and we can slip that in uh, quite easily. So um, the best thing to do is just open a, a support ticket and uh, do a screenshot for us, and we'll be happy to to add those for you. Uh, now there are some select menus that this does not apply to. And let me show you those. The tip off is usually like whenever you see these uh, combinations of a light select menu and then a dark colored select menu, these are uh, these haven't changed, okay? And these don't fall under that same uh, category really. So a lot of times these are, are very customized menus because they've got little icons next to your choices and uh, they might be multi-columns, okay? So uh, those are not going to get a, a quick search, okay? Um, but those are typically organized in such a way, uh, for example, that these columns might be different categories of options. So um, another good example of that is if you look at a print ad 
and you go down to the actions menu. You can see that each column has a, they're grouped by these uh, different categories. Okay, so these these aren't going to get a quick search. Uh, they just they're, they're a different uh, a different animal inside the code. So okay, uh, so that does it for the select menus. Um, we hope you find them useful. Uh, we had some bugs to work out at the beginning after the rollout, but I think we've squashed most of those. So they should be working well for you now. Um, next topic is hey, what happened to the dashboard? Um, that used to be, if when you log in as a publisher, it was right up here. You had this dashboard item, and that is gone. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that the advertiser dashboard is still there. It's still a separate item, and it is still, um, uh, nothing has changed about it. Okay, so this does not affect your advertisers in any way. Uh, we're strictly talking about the publisher dashboard. Now, uh, what we've done is we looked at how people were using it and the dashboard used to be you'd click here to go to the dashboard and then you'd uh, have different tabs across the top. And so to get to, let's say, your reports, you had to click the dashboard and then go to the reports tab. To look at basic statistics, you'd click the dashboard and and look at that if you know you had help you'd have to you know it was just it always took two or three clicks to get where you were going and what was sometimes really important information was sort of obscured behind the generic dashboard option here in the left menu so what we've tried to do is raise the profile of those individual items that used to be on the dashboard and we've just made them uh, a single click to get to so uh, as a publisher, this was your like the main tab that would load when you went to the dashboard. So if you were used to going to a, um, a, a setting where you could get this little report dashboard overview type thing, that's under statistics. Okay? And nothing has really changed in that. It just is simply now showing you um, that under this information. Likewise with billing. This was a two-click operation. Now, if you want to see the billing, you can just go directly to it. Okay, so you'll find that um, all across the board here. Um, the one view that has changed um, significantly in this update is this reports view. Uh, we used to have a um, it, was a, it was a more difficult uh, interface to navigate through. Uh, it was fine when we started out, but we've added lots and lots of reports over the years, and it was just getting unwieldy. Uh, here we now have this broken out by text, again with a quick search. Okay. I can start to type billing and I get those uh, things related to issues. Okay. So you can easily get to those. Uh, and then you can also, uh, by clicking the gear icon, you can jump right into customizing one of those reports. So if you're doing a lot of reporting, we think that you'll find this a much uh, easier way to get to it and a much more functional way to manage those. Uh, you may, depending on your preferences, have the deliveries tab here. Um, this was not really in the, the dashboard before, but it's, it's, uh, it falls under that category of information. Um, you may be wondering about the help stuff that used to be under the dashboard, that's now uh, accessible uh, directly through the question mark here at the very top left, uh, sorry, top right, uh, go to get help. And you'll be able to see everything that you were used to seeing there before, like our tutorial videos. Um, if you need to ask a general question uh, or file a bug that's not related to a specific ad, um, then you can do that right here. Uh, the one thing we eliminated from the old dashboard was we used to uh, show our blog post, uh, which is where we, we always put our release notes. Um, we, we had a separate little viewer that was actually inside Send My Ad. We just eliminated that. Uh, we found people weren't really using it very much. Uh, but we do have a button here to view the blog directly on uh, on Blogger. And so that'll just open up in a new tab or a new window in your browser, and you can just directly see the blog. Okay, so it's it's kind of the same idea, just it takes you off to the other site. Um, 
The only other thing to mention about this really is how to manage your frequently asked questions. So that's uh, something that you maintain uh, for your advertisers. If there are specific things that, um, that you need to um, have appear on your advertiser's dashboard, uh, you want a little list of frequently asked questions, that's now under general settings. And in the very first grouping here under site settings, there's now a manage uh, button. And that will let you uh, add and edit any of, the, uh, of your own uh, frequently asked questions. Okay, so that's the only thing where uh, it's not kind of immediately obvious maybe where that is, but that's where that has moved to. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit now about uh, a couple of improvements we've made for um, what happens when an advertiser or a publisher user uh, changes the issue that an ad is assigned to. Um, as you know, uh, you have the ability when you're looking at an ad to change uh, here in the panel on the left the issue. Now I have a, a feature, I'm, I'm gonna point that out. I, I uh, limit my ads to only one issue per ad. Uh, so you may have a different selector here. You may have an option where um, uh, you can add multiple issues. Uh, the feature I'm gonna talk about now uh, will work with both one issue and multiple issues enabled. But I have one issue enabled. Um, so the, the first new feature is we now have a separate notification you go to your uh, company profile, go to print ad settings, and scroll down to your uh, notifications. And it's always hard for me to find it in here. Ah, here we go. Uh, notify us when the advertiser, or think of it as you know the user, changes the issue. So uh, this has its own template, which you can control. Uh, but it just says that, you know, so-and-so, whoever it was, uh, changed the issue that this ad is running in. Uh, this solves a problem uh, where people weren't getting notified of this, and suddenly they had, you know, an advertiser, whether mistakenly or a publisher user, uh, had mistakenly uh, changed the issue, and uh, you didn't know about it. So this alerts you to that possibility. Now, uh, I mentioned that one issue per ad setting. Um, that is under, uh, also under print ad settings. Uh, under ad upload form, you can see right here, allow only one issue per ad. Uh, quite a few of our publishers have this enabled. So this must be turned on uh, for uh, the next settings to work. Once you have that on, there's another option that gets enabled under general settings. In your materials ID setup, there's a new option here, generate new materials ID when the issue is changed. So if you set up your materials ID with something, uh, one of your metadata fields in here being issue specific, and there are a few of these. There's the issue code, the five digits uh, issue unique, and the three digits uh, issue unique uh, ID numbers. Uh, those things uh, are all tied to your issue. And if you've got uh, one or more of those in your materials ID format, then that will be changed when, um, just very simply, when a user makes a change to the issue. So let me go to one that I've got here. And you can see my materials ID, um, the way it's set up, it uses the, the middle portion of it is tied to the issue code. So if I scroll down to my issue, you can see that makes sense. It says uh, the abbreviation for July 17. Okay, let's switch this to, let's say November issue. And you can see that it has immediately updated the issue code in my string. Okay. So this is a really uh, uh, important feature. This came out of um, some requests from, 
from customers. Uh, I do want to point out that this in no way affects uh, what happens with your materials ID string with pickups or the send to other publications feature. Um, that is um, that is controlled in a separate place. And that's in your uh, also in your company profile. Uh, sorry, I did that a little fast. But under print ad settings, you go down to uh, picking up ads. You will see uh, materials ID treatment for pickups and duplicates. And in this one, we uh, we select how we want things to happen. Uh, in this case, I'm switching the publication code. Um, let us know if that works for you, but that's how it's designed right now. Changing the issue code is strictly for when somebody is uh, changing the issue. Um, all right, uh, the last thing to show is an option that I think people who've been with us for a while will be happy for. So here's a, oh, a very early demo publication that I set up here. And you can see that I have issues going back all the way to 2008. Okay. So we can now limit that. And all you have to do is go, again, back into your company profile, print ad settings, and there's an ad list view uh, portion here. And the new option is called hide all issues X number of days after the issue run date. So you just have to pick a value here. I'm going to say, let's be very uh, aggressive here. I'm going to say 180 days after the issue run date. Uh, you have to reload the site or log back in uh, to see the change. So I reloaded the site, and you can see that that now has um, dramatically changed my menu. So if you find that that list getting unwieldy, uh, this is a great way to shorten that and you can control the criteria based on date. So it's um, uh, you know, it's a very easy feature and I think that uh, maybe it'll come in pretty handy for you. So okay well that uh, that takes us through all of our agenda for today. Uh, we hope you found it useful. Um, one question that's come up is um, to ask about the, um, how to phrase this, the, um, some of these menus have uh, since the rollout Occasionally, they would maybe appear to be cut off at the bottom or required um, excess scrolling. Uh, and we even had a case where a menu appeared obscured part way. Uh, as I said, when this was a brand new thing, and when, when we upgraded it, um, there were some of these behaviors that uh, that we had to go in and fix quickly. So. As far as we know, we've caught all of those, and uh, we've got everything fixed up. But if you uh, if you see some of those, the first thing that you really want to do is to uh, to try refreshing the site. And in most browsers, if you hold down the Shift key and then click the Reload, uh, or you know you click the URL and hit Enter, uh, a lot of times it's Control or Command R. In your browser but basically um, you know hold down the shift key and that forces it to uh, reload the site um, and ignore the cache that it might have in the browser so so typically we, we, we hate telling you to clear your browser cache because if you do it the wrong way it'll wipe out a lot of stuff that might be useful for you on other sites uh, so we always tell people to try first of all to uh, to just reload the site and doing the shift uh, the shift key refresh um, is a more aggressive form of that. So if you are seeing menus that uh, that don't look correct, try that first, um, but then please let us know if that doesn't fix it for you because um, you know we can go in and tweak this.
All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, if you have um, if you have any request for uh, future webinar topics, please let us know. You can drop us a, uh, an email at support uh, or talk to your sales rep. Uh, we want to make these useful for you. So just let us know. Thanks very much and have a good afternoon.